your capacity to inhale feels limited at all. Just taking a deep breath doesn't feel as full as it could be. Uh, it might be helpful to work on the exhales first. Uh, and you might notice that the inhale feels more full after being able to take a full exhale. Right? If our muscles are in already a contracted state, then they have less power to create a powerful contraction. Um, and if they're kind of in a contracted state, they're probably more in a shortened state, so they have less range of motion to uh, create leverage for um, bigger motion. Right, so this applies for your breath too, right? We have a lot of different muscles that are involved, but our primary one is the diaphragm, which is this dome shaped. Uh, it's not just in the front of the body, right? It's 360 degrees, it wraps around. Um, and as you inhale, the diaphragm expands, it flattens downwards. And as you exhale, it comes back to its dome-like shape. So uh, as we inhale and the diaphragm flattens downwards, right, your rib cage also expands. And some of us can be stuck in this expansion of the diaphragm. And you know, while we, we are still inhaling and exhaling, there can be this rib flare uh, in the front and kind of compression in the back ribs uh, where there's a feeling of being stuck on that inhale so that the capacity to take a fuller inhale is not there. It's already kind of halfway there. Uh, so that's why the exhale and working on that can be really useful so that we get a right? Let the front ribs relax, let the back ribs expand. And so we have a range of motion to then take a fuller inhale. How we're gonna work on the exhale, you can do it different ways, right? A powerful or sound can uh, really be helpful to access the deep core muscles and help send more air out. It's also just helpful to like have an understanding of how the diaphragm moves so that you can create a visual in your mind um, of as you exhale this sense of pushing uh, this muscle around the rib cage, pushing that upwards to send the air out. Now we can't really just talk about the diaphragm. The pelvic floor is the bottom cap of this cylinder that is your core, right? So as you exhale, right, there's a lift in the pelvic floor, a lift in the diaphragm, and that all, like the change in pressure, uh, sends the air out. Now, it doesn't mean you're gripping through the abs or gripping through the pelvic floor, but it can be helpful just to subtly imagine that lift uh, as what is driving the air out. Now we can do that, you know, just the hush, whatever um, we want to use to access a stronger exhale, but adding resistance can be really helpful to access uh, your exhale and work on strengthening it. So this is where a balloon comes in, right? It's naturally providing resistance for your exhale breaths. Uh, so this is something that you can get pretty easily and it might be helpful to train your diaphragm a little more to kind of increase your capacity of exhale and to there in your inhale. Uh, whether you choose a balloon or any other um, just simple breathing techniques of shh, ha, uh, to get that full exhale. Uh, you can do it in any position, but I think it's really helpful to be down on the ground with your back to the floor uh, so that you can notice the curvature of the spine. You can notice if the spinal muscles start to engage away from the floor, if uh, there's a lot of curvature in uh, the low back, which indicates the pelvis kind of tipping forward. Uh, it's just a nice neutral place to land. And uh, when we do have this kind of pelvis tilting forward, the relationship between the diaphragm and the pelvic floor becomes um, not as efficient, right? So we're going to find a pretty neutral placement of pelvis, uh, of torso, so that that relationship um, is as efficient as it can be. And a way that can be useful to prevent this kind of tilt of the pelvis forward is not only being on your back as you do these exercises, but having some hamstring engagement, glute engagement. And so the way you can do this is uh, taking a wall, placing your feet against the wall, and you'll lightly think of dragging the heels down. Uh, the heels are gently pushing down, 
uh, are pushing into the wall a little bit and then drawing down. So you feel a slight engagement in the backs of the thighs, kind of trying to relax the fronts of the hips. Uh, and then noticing the curvature of your back, if there's any lifting away uh, of the spinal muscles away from the floor, you're softening that down. And then you can uh, take your shh, imagining the lift of the pelvic floor, the lift of the diaphragm upwards, pushing the air out. You can take your shh, or you can take your balloon. And either uh, example that you take, you have that little feedback of the floor for the back, you have a feedback of the wall for your heels, uh, and then you have the visualization in your mind of a lift at the base of the pelvis, a lift of this muscle uh, at the rib cage, and that lift is letting the air move out more completely. And after you do, I'd say like three rounds, you could go up to five rounds, don't need to overdo it here. Uh, but after you do that, notice if your capacity for inhale changes, if yeah, it feels any different. Also just, again, a great core exercise too.